Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this video, I'm going to take a look at budget Galakrond Rogue. Galakrond Rogue is an effective archetype, but the usual lists are filled with all sorts of legendary cards and they're very, very expensive. Of course, if you're a new or returning player, you can choose a Galakrond Rogue deck as your free deck, and that's going to give you a bunch of legendary cards that you can use in the archetype. But what if you don't have that deck and you would still want to play some Galagrand Rogue, then can it be done? And I'm happy to tell you that yes, I have found a way and it can be done. Overall, I think this budget Galagrand Rogue is mediocre as a budget deck. I had a little under 60% win rate with this, so it's a deck that you can climb with, but it's not one of the absolutely best performing decks. The only legendary card in this list is, of course, Galagrond itself, which is free for everyone. And, well, all rogue decks that are playable at the moment basically are Galagrond decks, because Galagrond is just so phenomenal for rogue. When it's fully invoked, draws four free cards for you, equips a weapon. That's just a swing that you cannot miss. But without any of the support structure of all the other legendary cards, this deck has two other win conditions, and those win conditions are Cursed Vagrant and Questing Adventure. Questing Adventure has long traditions in Rogue, generating a bunch of lackeys can be useful, you can get some big adventures going. But even bigger win condition has actually been the Cursed Vagrant. 7 mana 7 5, Death Rattle summon a 7 5 Shadow with Stealth. When this bad boy hits the board, then opponents will tremble. There are very few decks in the meta that have answers to that, like warrior decks are completely perplexed by it, they just can't really do anything about it. So in warrior matchups, if you have been able to push a little bit of damage, you slam the curse vagrant, that is going to typically end the game, because they just cannot answer it. The weakness of these win conditions as compared to all the legendary cards are that first, you're unable to snowball as quickly, so that makes Demon Hunter matchup worse, because you can't kill them, you can't really raise the Demon Hunter that effectively. And another one is that Priest actually is one of the classes that can answer Cursed Vagrants. So this deck is significantly weaker against Priest than the full cost version of Rogue. That said, I was able to win games against both Priest and Demon Hunter during testing, but those two matchups were my bad matchups. They were the only matchups where I lost more games than I won. I had a particularly good time for some reason against Warrior, which was kind of surprising, but I'll take it. Overall, the deck is your regular Galagon Rogue. You get on the board at the start, you generate some random resources, you activate some combo effects, then questing, make a big questing, cursed vagrants on the board, get a big Galagrond, get some free cards, get a big tempo swing, win games. As for the mulligans with this deck, the mulligans are also similar to the full cost version. Pharaoh Cat, Spy Mistress, Backstab and Evil Miscreant are your kind of basic mulligan. Then sometimes you mix in an SI7 agent. SI7 agent with Backstab, for example, can be a useful combination. And if you have one drop like Spy Mistress or Pharaoh Cat, then keeping Praise Galagrond can be useful to buff that up. And sometimes you also have room to keep a Seal of Fate to destroy some minions. And the rest of the card will be found during the game. If you want to upgrade this deck into a full cost version, well, there are those secret variants around, but there's nerfs coming on Monday to the secret version, so if you want to build into one of those, just net deck a list. In this one, I'm just going to give you advice into building a vanilla Galakron Rogue, which is fairly similar, to be honest. And you want these four legendary cards into your deck Edwin Van Cleef, Kronk's Dragonhoof, Heistbrand Dogwaggle, and Flick Skyship just really powerful tools. So what you want to do, you first start to cut the questing adventurers. So you replace one questing with an Edwin, that's a straight up upgrade right there. Edwin does a similar thing that questing does, but it does it better. Then you can cut another questing for Kronks, and then you can start cutting the Cursed Vagrants, one Cursed Vagrant for Heist Baron, and another Cursed Vagrant for Flick. And there you have it. At some point you may also be interested in adding some Shadow Steps into the list. Gronks, Heistburn and Flick all work extremely well with Shadow Step. 
So you can either add those once you have all the legendaries or maybe after the Heist Baron, when you have Gronks and Heist Baron, that might be a point where you could also start considering those. And then you could take out the SI7 Agents to add a pair of Shadow Steps into the deck. And voila, you have a meta deck. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get notifications when new videos come. I also live stream on Twitch six days a week. Check down the description below to find a link to my Twitch channel. And now, let's go take a look at Budget Galagrant Rogue in action. We'll go with this. Let's see what we can do. And a Frozen Shadow Weaver. Alright, we have some tools here. Definitely have some tools here. So far, so good. Galagrant, okay. Just take a quick the dagger and wait. Boom is pretty sweet. I could do like backstep SI7. I might do that later. I can seal fate one of these now. And dagger down the other. Let's see if he kept two cards, so there could be a satyr. Let's see if the satyr is there. Because then I want to backstab SI7 against that. Then we'll do a backstab. And an SI7 agent. Is the tree one still going to stay hidden? Now the tree one can tree one can go out now. It's fine at this point. I have the Ethereal Lucky to enable another SI7. He just goes in with the War Glaives of Azinoth. And what can I say? It's a powerful tool. A couple of more turns until the Cursed Vagrant. I could freeze his face now to deny a Glaive on that Adept. Maybe I have to. Face a little bit and dagger up. Some kind of SI7 agent turn coming next. He could have an eye beam to kill this. Okay, we get rid of Kane. That's not terrible. I can actually freeze his face again. And kill Kane. Okay. That's good. So next turn I'm playing the Cursed Vagrant. Do I need to trade this? He's looking for a priestess here. So I'm either pushing 7 to the face. Or I'm trading the 4-4. What if the 4 4 value trades into my 3 3? We'll see about that. We're putting 7 to the face. And the Vagrant on the board. So Priestess doesn't really do much now. Do you have a way to deal with the Vagrant? Do you see what must be done? Well, a really big altruist turn might do it. I have a backstop for the altruist though. Oh, 
Oh, wow. I am down to 15. Draw one card. I can make it draw two. So, we're going to praise Galagrand on this. Two cards from the deck is better than one spell, isn't it? Let's draw two cards, take us zero. Backstab the altruist. Play another cursed vagrant. Play a feral cat. Swing at the face. Kill the 4-1. So I go to 16. I have two cursed vagrants on the board. And he has lost his altruist. Yeah, Priestess is not going to do a thing. Oh, it can summon more seven fives for me. Okay, I think we're going in with this. Accent, I always forget to tap first when playing Warlock. Yeah, I mean, tapping first is good, but it's kind of overrated. The number of games that you will lose if you don't tap first, that's like less than 1%. The effect on your win rate is tiny. So I wouldn't worry too much. I mean it's of course good to get your habits right, but tapping first is not the thing that loses you the majority of games that you will lose. The majority of games are lost by strategic decisions, not tactical ones. Well, now I can seal fate the priest's face. I think we'll give that a try. An intriguing opportunity. Let's go. See what happens. Dark Dag! Redeem Day Dag! Alright. After this game we'll take a look at what that... What that cryptic list of characters contains and we will play a game with that. Maybe two. Depends. A four, six million. I'm a little bit scared of apotheosis. So I think I'm trading it away. Do I trade it away with miscreant? Yeah, that's okay. So I can do backstab. I can do SI7 Agent. And then I can do Goblin Lucky on that one. Trade away to a Light Drake. Obviously, he can still play Apotheosis on the Imprisoned Homunculus. So, this doesn't necessarily solve my problem. That wasn't as strong. So now I can just do Corruptor, right? But then he might have an answer. Well, there's always a chance for there to be answers. I'll kill that. See what happens next. Now he has the Reliquary. It can be buffed. He could have another Nova or a Breath of the Infinite. We'll see. I'm much less comfortable playing this matchup as the budget deck than I am as the full cost deck. The full cost deck 
just wins quite handily, but the budget deck struggles more. Can I find like a sap here? And just a bamboozle. Bamboozle isn't nearly as good. Yeah, that bamboozle is unlikely to do the trick. Maybe a deadly poison can help. In this scenario, I probably go with the Pharaoh cat. You might be able to kill this off. Yeah, this isn't too good. We'll see if he's able to kill it off. He might be. I don't dare to evolve, because if I evolve, then it's easier to kill this one. But he could also have apotheosis for that. And now he can, of course, also have a soul mirror. With the budget deck, it's so much more difficult to defeat the full cost priest than it is with the full cost deck. With the full cost deck, you're quite confident about the matchup. But the budget deck just doesn't have all the swings. I guess we're trying to kill that and see what happens. He did. He does have a dragon in hand, so that's probably like Morazond. I always saw Twilight Drake and the Chrono Breaker there. We I'll face tank that one, and I'll play a Devoted Maniac to trade away this one. Try something like that. Priest doesn't have a lot of cards in hand. They might run out of resources. Or they might not. Here we are lucky. Cold blood. Or is ambush better? Maybe ambushes, but he can he can have shadow madness. Maybe gold blood is better. Dagger up. Deadly poison. Cobalt lucky. Kill go. that one. Then the feral cat. Hit face. I'm gonna have Shadow Madness for the Grand Mummy too. Maybe it's still Grand Mummy time. Let's let's give this a try. Go wide. I've already seen Chrono Breaker. Well, that wasn't the real Nova. That's what I discovered Nova. So I saw it saw the Soul Mirror. This looks like a Highlander deck, and that's exactly what it is. How high can he roll with that? Pretty high. Reasonably high. Okay. Yeah, this might be difficult. Listen, you brats. This one goes over there. We'll see where the buff lands. It lands over here. Okay. So I probably need to witchy lucky. First, in order to enable combos, can I just play Shield of Galagrand? Maybe I can just play Shield of Galagrand. That's six damage. Eviscerate. Eviscerate. Dagger hit. Heat. Cold blood there. Push face with these. Now, I have to leave him out with apotheosis, for example. It's not possible to go for a win. Hmm. That was an excellent top deck. I had a read that he didn't have an AOE piece in hand right now, but he actually did. Or well, he was able to top deck one. He didn't, he was just able to top deck it. 
No one will die with this, so we need that back again. But I guess I'm probably dead here. I'd need like a hard removal piece. But that was not coming, so I'm dead. Okay, well... Maybe I do. We'll try. Maybe a little bit too aggressive of a keep. Should have mulliganed one spy mistress away. One spy mistress is enough. We'll see. I'm not quite sure where to go with budget rogue. But I'm quite confident that I don't want to go with the secrets. Four secrets and two stunners. I tried that. It It's not good enough. It just doesn't get the job done. I think we're holding this back a little while here. Let's see what happens. Didn't see a response yesterday. Do you have Gonk the Raptor? I did respond. And I said that if I don't, I will craft it. <laughs> I'm not going to check. I don't remember. And I'm not going to check. Just just enter the decks you like. Questing adventurer. I think we're seal fading his face here. Looking for an opportunity to get a questing out there, but that opportunity will not present itself while the spy mistress still lives, I suppose. Okay, now the opportunity does present itself. So, our opportunity is to play Questing Adventure. Give me a quest. And backstab the 1 2. Now play an Ethereal Lucky to discover a spell. And the spell could be. Hmm. Is there, is there ever enough time to play Shadow of Death in this matchup? I'm not sure, maybe we'll just pick Eviscerate. And go for a coin. Another spy mistress. I'll face tank that. And I hit face with this. And there are multiple ways for Rogue to answer a questing. But a 6 6 questing is still something, and I have a shield of Galagrant for next. Oh. Bah. Well, that has got to be one of the more surprising ways for a Rogue to answer a 6 6 questing. You don't see that every day. I'm a little bit sad now. Just a little bit. Duck tag, so it's getting close now that you get partner with Twitch. Actually, my average viewership has been going down. It was it reached the peak of 72 around two weeks ago. But now we are down to now we are down to 69. So the partner dream is going further away. I will take that. Take all the damage we can get. So that would be 8, 11 damage, which means that we're going to swing at the face now. Let's see how this goes. Okay, Alexander, see you. Andy, how are you finding Questing Adventurer? Uh, in Demon Hunter it's very strong, because Mana Burn can do an insane job of protecting it. I have had less success with the Questing in Rogue, but Rogue is the second best place that you can put it in. And Rogue is not bad. It's just... I'm just not sure if it's strong enough. I'm now trying with the Adventures and the Vagrants. To try to find a little bit of oomph. A little bit of damage for this deck. That the full cost decks have and this one lacks. I, I just haven't found a real alternative to the questing. That's kind of the problem. Quickly. 
but it's better in Demon Hunter because questing with mana burn is just insane. That's 8, 11 for 5 mana, so that's lethal. Let's kill him. With our randomly generated resources. Pow. Maybe we do. Maybe we do. Immutable state subscribed. Thank you, Immutable. And welcome to the guard. Spy Mistress Time. Let's see what this warrior is made of. And I go with the budget demon hunter. Yeah. I also received feedback that people have had difficulties like using mana burn effectively. And that really made me think that okay, I maybe should have Maybe should have went into more detail on how to get the most out of the mana burn. Because, like, if you know the decks that you're playing against, using mana burn is quite easy. You know the key turns, you know when to play it so that they can't do that move that they want. But if you don't, it's harder. He could have the coin challenger here, but he mulliganed all the cards. So I think that it's more likely that he can find, like, a Corsair cache. And finding a Corsair cache against this, you know, that kind of sucks now, doesn't it? But how do I capitalize on this still? I mean, this one's going to the phase again. And then I'm playing the SI7 agent on the board. He, If he equips a weapon, then he might get to a skipper turn. Or he might not. It's going to be a very, very tough turn for him now, because next turn it has to be the skipper turn. If next turn isn't the skipper turn, then he's in so much trouble. Can't really do the questing here, though. It has to be just Goblin Lucky on this to enable the Miscreant and push face. And he has to have the Armor Smith here. Okay, Armor Smith or Bust. Show me what you've got. Can he do it with just the skipper? Probably not. Skipper plus one minion. Then he could coin the brute. Skipper one drop coin brute is sort of a way. The other way is the armor smith. Does he have two armor smiths in hand? No, just one armor smith. Okay. But I don't have. 12. I only have 6 from hand, in fact. And he can draw more skippers. So it is time to play the questing adventure. So Go for the lucky his armor smith away. I want to stop the armor generation. Trade that skipper away. And evolve this into a 4 drop. Now, he might be able to pick up another skipper. We'll see what happens if he does. But can he also pick up another armor smith? He could have rampage, inner rage. There are options. He was able to pick up a second skipper. And there's the sky raider. Ah, he had a brute. Brute was good. So this is a pharaoh cat. And a faceless lucky. Eviscerate the brute. And dagger down the skipper. Next turn I have the cursed vagrant. I hope that's going to be able to push enough. 
because there's no more skippers. He can of course get this damage and get it buffed and stuff, but we'll see. Bunch of tree trees. Bunch of cards. Can find an armor smith still. We'll play the vagrant and push face with everything. Put him down to five. How are you going to stop this vagrant when the death rattle summons a seven five with stealth? He has ten on board. 7 mana. Shouldn't be enough to do 19. Well, he could find a Titanic Lackey. Or he can find another Armorsmith. Or, that was a snap pick spell. What is the spell? Oh, that's a good spell. That's a really good spell. No, well, he can have lethal over two turns. He just doesn't trade into the Vagrant. He trades the other minions away. And he might have lethal over two turns. Nine, ten, eleven. Thirteen damage here. Needs ten from hand. That can be done. There are multiple ways for him to have 10 from hand. I need to go all face so that hero power doesn't get him out of reach. <laughs> 10 from hand is totally doable. But I have to push face. The game ends next turn, no matter what happens, either on his turn or on mine. But 10 from hand is totally doable for 8 mana. With He has half of his remaining cards. He has inner rages and rampages left, so he can just do inner rage, inner rage, rampage. Well, that would actually just be... That would not quite be enough, but he might have lethal now, and there's nothing I can do about it. He needed... A salvation from this library lands. Titanic Lucky, 1 in 6. Or Ethereal Lucky, 4. I guess exactly that shield block. So either he has the 10 from hand, needs another 8, so. Or he needs a Titanic Lucky. One or the other has to happen. Either way, the game will end this turn. On his turn or on mine. I just would like to know whether he has it or not. Come, I mean, you could like speed it up a little. That's eight. He needs another two. Two more. I guess he didn't have it. We're not keeping any of this stuff. Okay, let's see what we can find. My secret weapon, the Cursed Vagrant. It doesn't always win games. But we'll try. See what happens. Corsair Cash happens. I kind of don't want to go in seal fate. I think I'll just dagger her up and wait for the time being. Let him take the first swing into my face. Multiple frozen shadow weavers. 
I'll give it a try. Let's see what happens. Are you really going to enrage that? Mm -hmm. That's unexpected. It's a good battle rage, though. I can't freeze his face if I want to kill this cleanly. So, many so we'll have to give him a lucky. Fine. We'll let him have a lucky. Let's just make that kind of toast. Turn that kind of toast and hit him in the face. Now he gets to kill one of these with the weapon. And he managed to draw a little. Not too happy about that. Oh no! I was really hoping he wouldn't have a skipper turn yet. Because he didn't have an anchor. But it's a skipper and... Oh dear. You don't often see them play three minions for five mana without having the anchor. That was crazy. That's really tough. I kind of don't want to sap the armsmith. No, I can't sap the armsmith. Just need to freeze his face here. Turn that into a 4-drop. That was not the 4-drop I wanted. If there's a rampage for this, it becomes a 4-7. Then if he can copy it. So rampage and the mercenary would be really, really bad for me here. Does he have those? He has the Rampage. Does he have the Mercenary? No Mercenary. Just facing the place. I don't have to sap that. I'll have to seal fate that. This one goes face and becomes a five drop with the same stats as that. Uh, I might as might as well coin the Pharaoh cat out there as well. But now there's definitely a chance that I will die. A bit too much damage came in too quickly. I've seen one skipper and he hasn't had an Ankar, so he might not be able to get like another skipper turn. Well, those at least failed. That's good. I'm going to need some healing, right? Probably. Then I don't get to develop the Cursed Vagrant. I want the Cursed Vagrant out there. And I want to kill all of his minions. I've seen one Inner Rage, I've seen one Corcoran, I've seen one Rampage. And I know he didn't have a Bloodstone Mercenary in hand earlier. But now he's going to get to the Skipper. No, the other Skipper is coming. That's going to be a big deal. It's going to be such a big deal. I need the shield. The miscreant. I need to hit into that one, I guess. But now he will get another skipper turn. 
And that means potential for a battle rage turn. If he can't find the battle rage, he won't have the resources. But we're about to find out. Double armor smith is no problem if he doesn't have a battle rage. He also needs the battle rage. Does he have the battle rage? No battle rage. No battle rage is still fine. Right? I mean, it's a little risky, of course, but... Okay. So this will trade away that one, right? Let's see about the spell first. Assassinate might not be a bad spell. Then this one is going to kill that. with two bombs up. Maybe it's fine. Hit there. Hit there. Hit that one don't. Hit there. Hit there. Hit there. Do it like this. This thing with just one minion on the board leaves me with a taunt up. He doesn't have any damaged minions in case he picks up a battle rage. So this buys me time. I've seen both skippers. No more skippers. So I can start healing. Maligos, I don't have damage right here. Twilight Drake. Twilight Drake might work. I played this one first, right? Brightwing. Maybe Nostromo. Twilight Drake. Guardian. Trade. Start pushing face. I have healing coming. I have a taunt up. No more skippers. I can just start healing here. Maybe. Depending on this discovery. I mean, if he discovers Brawl here, then that's crazy. Not Brawl, but more Lackeys. Trying to get to a point where he can... Well, he can, like, play Grom and something. But he doesn't. Maybe something like this. Turns for Calgon, I think the stealth rope maybe would be a thing. Yeah, it could. The fires Although part of the reason I have Cursed Vagrant here is that I can I can get it for zero mana from Galagrand. That's what I want to do. Zero mana Cursed Vagrants. I don't know if I have what it takes against the Demon Hunter, because Demon Hunters are pretty fast. I guess I need to take a that one down. I was contemplating Koi in SI7 now. Demons. Err, demons. Ouch, ouch. 
taking a beating already. Here we go. Not looking too good. This was not a lucky I hoped for. I fought for some proactive lucky and then I could play that into SI7. This demon hunter says just come at you like a like a train. There's not enough time. I cannot survive. Oh no. It's gonna be a priestess. Priestess next turn would be really bad for me. Do I need to invoke the Galagrond? Then I could coin Galagrond next turn, but does it even help me? I think I do need to invoke, but a little bit of a different. I need to just rush that in. But Priestess will have a field day here. I can kill Priestess with double Eviscerate. I mean, he hero powers down to 5 when and plays Priestess if he has the Priestess. My blades will sing. He had the Priestess. Heroes power down to 5 when just in case. But answering the Priestess is nigh on impossible. I have to spend two eviscerates to kill the priestess. There's probably no way to return, come back from the. I mean, but that was Fell Screamer in the priestess. That was the dream combo. I just can't beat that. I'm not fast enough. That's, that's part of the problem with the Vagrant. Probably have to do Galagrond next turn and hope for some... Oh no! Well, okay, he had super nuts. That's like... Ugh. What can you do? You can't do anything about that. Couple of really good cards, please. This guy's toast. I guess that card isn't bad. Can I afford to play the Faceless Corruptor now? No, I cannot. But they only need 7 more damage. He's almost guaranteed to have it. There's 5 cards left. That Pyroblast for 7 mana is just a really good card. Yeah. The damage is there. Probably not this turn, but almost certainly next turn. Nothing can stop it because he can just face tank everything with the war glaives as long as it takes. So it gets me down to four now. And war glaives can just tank my taunts. Or he could have a Glaybound Adept. That works too. So I don't think there are routes. I could get second thought and he might not have a Glaybound Adept. That's the out. No Glaybound Adept is the out. But... I guess it's there. 
Well, if it wasn't there before, then it's going to be there now. And that's also going to discount it to you, so... Well, it wasn't there before and it's not there now. But I still don't have enough, right? <laughs> he has it. He swings into both of the taunts and then into my face with the double slice. That was an out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.